Good evening and welcome to the Cape Elizabeth School Department meeting on Tuesday, September 10th. Um, and we'd like to start the meeting with the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge of Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Um, our first um, item is adjustments to our agenda, and um, we will have an executive session to discuss a personnel issue after the meeting. Um, that is the only adjustment? Yeah, and we, yes, and we will not be returning to public session after that. Okay. Um, approval of the school board minutes from last month. We received a... Um, a new set of minutes. Last month's minutes um, uh, left out two things. A third lease that for technology that wasn't in our packet. And um, item 11E uh, wasn't in our original packet, which was the um, money that the board voted to put into a capital project last month. Um, so everyone received the new All the board members did, and anyone that's interested and has a corrected copy, it's posted on the website. Okay. Okay, thank you. Um, communications. Huh? Um, you have in your packet information on the MSMA Fall Conference. Um, this year there is an outstanding uh, set of workshops, including one, Clinic One, Session One, put on by uh, representatives from the Cape Elizabeth School Board. Um, and all I, what we do ask is that if you plan on attending either both days or one of the days, if you could let Mary know um, by Friday of this week so that um, we can send that the registration into M MSMA. Okay. Okay, so everyone get that into Mary by Friday. Um, comments from the public. Are there any? No? Okay, we will move on to recognition. Um, nothing at this time under... My superintendent's report. Talk about recognition oh, on the opening okay. day. Okay. Then we'll move on to the superintendent's report. Uh, just a couple of remarks on the opening of school this year. And, and we again, um, for the start of the school year, had teachers attend for three days and uh, the students for the, for the second two days. I think you'll hear probably from the principals in their reports about the openings at their, at their individual schools. But I think it was an extremely smooth opening. Um, we started something um, new this year because it, it, the school board I think a couple of years ago has really made an effort to um, recognize uh, either accomplishments by staff um, or, or things that are noteworthy that go on in our schools. Um, what we started this year is um, recognition of groups or individuals that really help us get to where we want to be with regard to our mission and our vision and our future direction plan. Um, and we had four groups that were recognized, and each of them received a frame certificate, and there'll be a, a plaque with a little, um, with each group over, the, over time will be added with a little, little um, recognition of, of their group on this plaque that will be housed in the superintendent's office. Um, I'd just like to mention, uh, for the school board's benefit and anyone else in the public, um, what those groups were. We had the a special recognition of the seventh grade team at the middle school. And this group has spent an inordinate amount of time, uh, their own time, uh, even have been able to collaborate with uh, eighth grade team members. And, and I think it's almost been a total school project in making the laptop initiative work. Um, they really have taken this on and, and, and making it something that will really be a learning tool in the school. Um, and really will help us get to where we want to be as far as our vision is concerned. It takes this kind of collaboration, um, and that's what we're looking for in all of our schools, and, and, and I feel the, the seventh grade team was worthy of that recognition, and they were recognized um, on opening day. Also, Pond Cove School, as a group, uh, was recognized, and the reason for this recognition was that, you know, as we look at, we often do look at test scores, whether they're MEA scores, 
um, and we get concerned sometimes if they're not where we want them to be. But in looking at Pine Cove School is in the area of reading, what we found is that over the last um, four years since um, the present test has been in existence, um, they've continually gone up uh, in regarding the percentage of students who are meeting the standard in the learning results. Um, and this is at a time when if you look at uh, learning uh, MEA scores, they're relatively flat throughout the state. And even in our own district, um, you know, we have ups and downs. Um, yes, our scores are among the best in the state, but what we've found uh, at Pond Cove School is, is continual improvement in reading. And I think a lot of it, you know, we can take a look at in, in conjecture as to why that is, but it is an area where um, a significant amount of time and energy and money has gone into the Pond Cove program. Um, reading recovery is in full operation right now, and I think that that has made a big difference. The third and fourth grade literacy um, program um, that complements reading recovery, I think that was started two or three years ago and is in, in full swing. So those kinds of initiatives, I think, are paying off. Um, and that school, I think, felt real good about re being recognized for the efforts they're making in the teaching of reading. Another group that was recognized was the maintenance department and their supervisor, Ernie McVeigh. Um, you know, whenever you can save money in the budget, um, that directly affects students and where, where we want to be as far as our students are concerned. And through mostly their own initiative and working with Pauline, that department um, has saved this school district uh, a significant amount of money in terms of dollars that come back to our program because what they've done in some energy areas, whether it's refitting boilers um, and um, doing the best they can to best, get the best cost uh, for oil, whatever it might be, I, they really do make an effort. They do a lot of in-house work that saves us significant money and it was worthy of recognition, although it's not directly related to our academic program. Um, without that, that $100,000 that they uh, have saved the district, we'd have to pay that and that would come out of somewhere else. And lastly, the science department at the high school was recognized for their efforts, um, the research that um, they undertook, visits to, to other schools, um, the dialogue, the discussions that have gone on for several years about the science curriculum at the high school. Um, and they took a risk to do what they thought was the, in the best interests of the students at the high school and put together a new program and a new way in which we're going to teach science as far as the way our courses are offered. And although that may seem like not a big deal, um, having been a high school principal and assistant principal for over 10 years, I know change isn't always easy at that level because once you've been doing something in a certain way for a long period of time, it's easy to say, well, biology is always taught in the 10th grade. That's the way it was when I was a kid and that's how it should always be. <clears throat> but that department um, really took a look at what was in the best interest of the students at the high school and what is the best way to offer these subjects um, and are instituting that this year. Our hope in all of this, as we look at recognizing these individuals and departments is that they begin to look at results in the science department, for example. What are the results of our, our efforts and what's going to happen because of it? But we had four outstanding groups, individuals, and departments, and a school um, who have been recognized for helping us get to our, our vision on, on our first day of school. That's it. Um, and one thing I would like to add to that is I, I was with Tom when, when these um, awards were given out. And it was so exciting to see the staff members as they came up to accept these awards. Um, I mean, they were beaming from ear to ear. And, and I think that this is about those people in our system who go the extra mile and who make us what we are. And you know, when, when Tom talks about um, the laptops, I mean, this, we really put a ton of effort, that seventh grade team put a ton of effort into getting that ready for the kids. And at curriculum night for seventh grade, every teacher that I went to mentioned 
how they were going to work on the laptops and what they were going to do. And everyone just seemed so excited about it. You can tell that, you know, I mean, they're really taking this whole program and this whole endeavor so seriously and want to make it fabulous. Um, and the science at the high school, I mean, th those people worked very hard to make a big change at our high school. And that doesn't come easy. Um, and they did a great job, and they'll make it work. You, you can just see that in their faces. Um, the Pine Cove reading, you know, that's something that I think the school board can sit here and say, you know, we can look at something that has paid off, that, that we have funded over the past few years, the literacy program and reading recovery. Because, you know, of all the things that get put up on the board and all of the things that get cut during our budget season, you know, those were things that stuck at Pine Cove. And we're really seeing the results of the people who are very dedicated to do that. Um, and our maintenance department, I mean, you know, just in working with Ernie for the past couple of years and now depending on him even more as we get closer to our building project, our renovation project. I mean, Ernie is so dedicated to our school system and saving every dollar that he can and looking to get the best job done for us. And I think we should be really proud of that. Um, okay, I guess we can move on to the principal's reports. Uh, Tom. Good evening. I, I probably shouldn't be surprised by now after seven years on the job, but uh, school opened very smoothly again thanks to the extra effort that everybody put in to make it work. You're probably aware at the elementary level that uh, we're pretty precise about what goes where in every classroom, and the teachers managed to pull it off and be ready for the first day of school. We had a terrific opening once again. Tom and Marie have already mentioned the uh, rec professional recognition that happened before the student day. Um, I just wanted to mention again uh, that internally we're aware of the difference we make with kids and that literacy study is already uh, bearing fruit with results in student learning. But to hear it from the superintendent and the school board has made a difference. Um, Tom also came to a, a staff meeting. I think you'll agree with me that the attitude now at Pond Cove is with the energy and the uh, the feeling that we're accomplished something that you really haven't seen anything yet. I think they want to do even more. So I appreciate it, and it really goes a long way. Uh, speaking of awards and recognition, I think I mentioned to you last June that Kelly Hassan was among the five finalists for Maine Teacher of the Year Award. She was not selected as the ultimate recipient. Now, I'm, I'm sure the winner was very deserving, but uh, we still think Kelly Hassan will be our Teacher of the Year. A uh, quick word about enrollment. We, um, we're getting much better at it. We're, we're very close to what we projected last year during budget season, so close that you don't need to worry about it. We are within a few students uh, in each grade level, and we didn't have any bubbles to uh, worry about. So that's good news. We uh, started our open houses this week. We had one. We're doing two grade levels at a time this year. On Monday night, we're doing another one Thursday night. We've changed the format a little bit this year to reflect the K-12 through work that's been done with curriculum and instruction and um, public relations about le the learning results and gone back to a little more informal way with students providing um, an orientation to the classroom and their desks and lockers and going down to the Allied Arts places in the school. And the feedback from Monday night was very, very positive. Lots of smiles and people uh, making sure I knew that they liked it better this way. But I do have a recommendation for the uh, scheduling committee not to schedule all these events in one night. It's, it's a small price to pay but uh, for the parent involvement, but we had a real parking problem. If any of you were there, they were on the fields. They were all over the place. But I, this, I think it shows the level of family involvement at Pond Cove. Everybody comes to the open houses. The new playground, um, I shouldn't be surprised again. It's been a terrific success. Um, and now that some of the novelty has worn off, kickball games and football games are starting up again. Um, and just to remind you, Saturday morning is the official opening of that the Cape Play people are going to have a little celebration at the Pond Cove and Middle School playgrounds. And we're going to do the sacred painting of the four square courts. It'll be a very formal thing. Um, it's just to remind you, I will not be at next week, next month's school board meetings. I'll be in Tokyo and then in a city in northern, the northern Maine Island, Japan, in Tawada.
I really appreciate the professional support I've gotten for this. I think it's an opportunity for me and the district, and I look forward to reporting to you when I get back. To conclude on a little more somber note, uh, Pond Cove is preparing uh, to have a simple, formal ceremony tomorrow with all the students out in front of the school to salute the flag, have a moment of silence, and sing two songs. We think that would be appropriate. If more is needed or less, then we'll adjust. Thanks. Tom, what time is that happening? We think now at 11.15. Thank you. Any questions or comments for Tom? No? Oh, I'm sorry. Okay. Um, the high school, Jeff. Everybody was glad when the, um, when the students showed up um, on Thursday and Friday. Um, <laughs> there was a lot of work that was done on those first three days, and uh, there's a lot of work to do this year. I mentioned this um, last, last time. And so it's tremendous relief for everybody at every level to, to, to see the students come and uh, to all of a sudden get back into the routine of school. Um, our departments are working very hard together already, um, identifying the priority knowledge and skills from the learning standards that will become the subject of the common assessments that I talked about last month. Um, every department is working at it, taking advantage of the, to the common planning time that they do have this year. Um, after they get those common assessments developed, um, the next step is to develop some common scoring standards and then to do some scoring in common. Um, and it is all part of the effort to comply with the state mandate that by the end of this year we have in place a comprehensive assessment system that can measure students' uh, progress towards the learning standards, which this year's eighth grade class, this year's eighth grade class is required to demonstrate uh, that they meet the standards in, in order to be able to graduate uh, in 2007. Um, this is no longer way down the road. This is, this is right here. Um, we also think that there's some, some strong educational benefit to doing that, particularly in terms of getting teachers to work together and examining their instructional practice. Um, I promised you last time that I'll be a bit of a broken record about that subject, because it's such a focus of what we're doing this year. And starting next month, I'll have some more specific reports about things that, things that the groups are accomplishing. Um, we did have a good uh, opening of school. We did an experiment. Uh, some people know that uh, we had the very first day, Thursday, be freshmen only. Um, and I can tell you that almost unanimously, in fact, unanimously from parent feedback that we got, uh, that was very, very well received. It allowed the freshmen an opportunity to see the school, to get used to the school, to get comfortable, to find their way, to meet their teachers before the, before the veterans came back. Um, and so it was a very much more comfortable beginning for them, I think. Um, there's been a lot of attention that's been paid at the high school to the issue of parking, which is not one that, that I anticipated when I became an administrator that I'd be spending a lot of time on. But we are really facing, faced with sort of three forces that are kind of coming together. Um, and one is that we have an increasing number of students at the high school uh, and, and, a, and an especially large senior class this year. We have an increasing percentage every year of students uh, who do drive to school or want to drive to school, and we have a fixed number of parking spaces. Um, and where we are right now is it looks like we can allow all juniors and seniors to park. We thought we might have to have a junior lottery. It looks like we can get away without one at this point. Um, but we are spending money on signage and some other things so, so we can do the best we can to say to a student, if you're given the privilege to park, uh, there will, in all likelihood, be a space available for you. Um, we are concerned about, uh, as more students over the course of the year get their licenses, get cars and things, we're really at capacity now uh, with the present juniors and seniors. So that's a subject that we have to have uh, lots of discussions about. But that's where we are now. Um, we're better than we expected to be, actually. Um, I'm, I'm glad that we don't have to go through a, a junior lottery because nobody wanted it. Um, I'm going to allow our new school board uh, representatives um, after the other principals' reports, I guess, Hillary Wymont and Aaron McKinney to talk about what we have planned for tomorrow uh, for September 11th. I think we've got some, um, some good things planned that will be touching and appropriate for the school. Um, but I am going to leave that to them, and I think that is my notes then. Okay. And Jeff, I'd just like to make a comment on the freshman um, day that you had. Uh, there are a lot of freshmen in our neighborhood, and so I've been asking 
as they've been getting on the bus and everyone they loved the idea of feeling special that they were able to go to school when no one else was there and find their way around before that hectic first day so that was a great thing to do there are a lot of freshmen in the school this year <laughs> yeah. so it's good it was a good it was a good time to, to, to begin that experiment thank you thank you okay um the middle school nancy <laughs> I'm just going to suggest that maybe we have Hillary and Aaron come up. I know they're very conscientious students, and there's a part of our report that might be a little extended. So um, if they'd like to come up and finish that sure. high school realm right now, I'd be certainly willing to wait for a few moments. Sure, thanks a lot. Um, I'm Aaron McKinney. And I'm Hillary Wymont. Nice to be here with you. Yeah. All right. Um, this is my first time in this, so we'll see how it goes. But <laughs> we're just going to talk about what happened at the school and uh, how, how things are going in the high school and, you know, what we're doing. So the first day went well, and everybody's kind of reluctant to go back to school. But it was good because the teachers are enthusiastic, and uh, everybody's happy to see their friends and all that stuff's going good. And also, uh, the week before, we had a barbecue for uh, student buddies, which gives the freshmen a chance to meet upperclassmen uh, like myself. And we are set, like uh, most seniors, and because we had a large size freshman class this year, some juniors were assigned to freshman buddies, and we got to help them and show them their rooms and you know talk to them, and, you know, so they can have like a mentor through their high school. So that's good, and uh, that's going good. And for tomorrow on September 11th, we are doing a few things in the school. We've asked, um, or we've invited students to wear patriotic colors, and we're going to have an assembly and a couple speeches, and also the planting of the trees in front of the school. And um, with the SAC, we had our first meeting yesterday. Not perfect attendance, but it was last minute kind of thing, and we've already planned for the next meeting, so hopefully everyone will be there and we're starting off on a good foot with that. Uh, if you have any questions about September 11th, go ahead and ask, because uh, we just planned some stuff and we talked about it in the SAC, and students got their opinions out, and we just feel it's really important to include remembering September 11th and how the events affected our lives and students' lives, because it is a big deal and it's a big change. So I think the tree ceremony will donate trees that will cut down in front of the high school is going to be really significant, and we have some students speaking, and it's going to go good. My pledge of allegiance, a moment of silence, and all that stuff. And uh, another issue is senior privilege this year is going really good. Um, of course, every year some students abuse it, but for the majority, most of us realize that we can hold on to that privilege, and it's important to us. And I really think it's important to have the senior year as a transition year into college. And in college, you have you're going to have a lot of freedom, and you're going to get to you know go up everywhere, do whatever you want, spend your you you're the one who manages your own time. So I think senior privilege gives a chance for seniors to do this. And I think it's a really important part. But I think it's going good. And you want to talk about sports? Sure. Um, the sports seasons so far have been going really well. Um, school spirit is awesome, and everybody seems to want to attend the games and watch. And there's it's just going really well so far. So. Oh, good. Any questions? Yeah, can you tell Any me questions? what time the uh, the September 11th ceremonies will be happening tomorrow? Uh, 9.15. 9.15? Is that outside or inside, Jeff? Outside. Thank you. Well, thank you. The two of you did a great job for your first meeting. <laughs> and normally you won't have to wait this long. Um, you, you'll be ahead of the principal's report. So. Oh, great. Thank you. Thanks. Um, I, I just wanted to mention one thing about the September 11 thing um, um, so that it's, it's publicly known and we'll be saying this um, at the ceremony tomorrow. I wanted to thank Ed and Jean McElhaney um, who are donating their services for the planting of the trees tomorrow um, and are getting the trees for us at cost. And I also want to mention that the trees are being funded by two of our classes, our last year's graduating class and our this year's senior class um, are donating the money to make that possible. So I wanted to mention that in public so it is, is well known. Okay. okay, thank you. Okay, Nancy. 
well, continuing on with the September 11th um, theme, just to let you know what we're doing tomorrow, we're beginning our day 7.50. We usually do the Pledge of Allegiance over the public address system. We're going to go outside tomorrow on the ball field, weather permitting, and we'll do the Pledge of Allegiance. It will be led by our eighth grade class. Then our seventh and eighth grade chorus is going to lead us in a song, and then we're going to have a moment of silence. Um, from that, we'll come back inside. So that will be happening right around 7.50, maybe 7.55. If the weather is inclement, we will do this in the gymnasium. So that's what we're going to do. On Saturday, last Saturday, I stopped to pick up a cup of coffee before I started my day and ran into one of our eighth grade parents and she asked me um, how the year was going and I said, great. And she said, oh, Nancy, that's such a standard answer. How do you know it's great? And I thought, that's a good question. Um, how do I know it's great? And I do know that it was a great start because, well, first of all, everyone showed up. So that's always a good beginning. And um, just as Aaron was saying, the teachers were very enthusiastic. As Jeff mentioned, everyone was really glad to see the students and to be there. Our three professional development days were well spent, but um, it was great to see everybody come in um, with all that enthusiasm, that energy. They were glad to see everybody. That day, actually, some of our students ran into school. And it wasn't just the fifth graders. Um, it was other students. And they weren't all late, either. So that's always a very good sign in a middle school that they're there. As John Casey and I have both been walking throughout the building and looking into classes and stopping by, we've just seen great energy around lessons and getting things started off and making sure we have everything that we need, everybody's organized and ready to go. And now even the regular things have started happening. People have forgotten their instruments and parents have had to bring them in. Uh, we've you know, forgotten that most important book we needed in our locker, so we come back after school and we walk up and, and find it for them and those kinds of things, which is a real normal part of middle school as well too. So we're off to a great start and in many ways it seems like a typical year. Last Friday um, was a great day in our building because it was laptop day for the seventh grade and it's the kind of day that if you'd had a chance to be there you would have said that's why I'm a member of the Cape Elizabeth School Board. Um, it was just energetic learning throughout those seventh grade hallways. There were great things going on in the rest of our building as well too, but here was a group that has been mentioned several times tonight that is working with a new initiative and trying to make it the best possible that it could be. Every classroom that I went into, we had um, faculty members were teaching in pairs and they had divided the day up to seven stations where the students went through and just learned a tremendous amount about their laptops. And Teachers were learning and trying new things, taking risks. Students were listening. And at the end of the day, everybody was exhausted. But it was a great kind of exhaustion. When you look at that, you always look at how did we get there and how are we able to sustain all of this? And of course, the entire seventh grade team is part of that sustaining. Also, part of it is Gary Lenoy and his great team that help us put everything together. It also is Ernie and his fantastic team that built us some of the most beautiful storage cabinets that you could find throughout the state um, and that work very well. It was all the other middle school teachers who answered the call of coming down and putting the laptops together. All of those things were part of it and it was our students so eager to learn and to get new things. Now the team also relies on one person tremendously and um, the seventh grade, her seventh grade colleagues are just so thankful that she delayed her decision to retire to the state of West Virginia for at least one year. And so tonight I have asked her to come and speak to you for a few moments. Now I did say this was a few main moments, um, but Beverly Bisbee is from West Virginia and time passes differently in the South. But I think you will be entertained and enthused to hear her talk to you about the laptops. Beverly. Okay. I can't believe that Nancy said you have five minutes. I went through the whole spiel on the way over. It took me 20. I have waited. I, this is my 34th year of teaching. I have waited for this moment for 33 years, and she gives me five minutes. <laughs> <laughs> Bev, you can take as long as you want. Friday. Six and, a half. <laughs> and I hope tears don't come because Friday was the most important day in my career. 
and it's hard to find the words to tell you exactly why. But in 1986, I won a grant, Wilton, Maine, called Writing Without Pencils that put a desktop computer on every desk in my room, and I taught English all year long using computers. 1986, I have waited a long time. I feel uh, very humbled by the recognition that you gave the seventh grade team. I want you to know that I mentioned that to Tom. I felt humbled by it because we were just starting. And yet, if any of you had come over on Friday, I would have said, we are into today. <laughs> we were so tired by the end of the day. As you know, I'm sure we have 160 seventh graders that now have laptops. On laptop day, <clears throat> we had the kids rotating in homerooms to go down to the basement of the 1930s building where Jason, I call him Jason and gang now, Jason and J uh, Ginger and Gary, Gary's gang, I mean, and Gary presented the laptops to the kids. I, it was like he was a father figure saying, here you are. These laptops are loaned to us by the state of Maine for the year, and we trust you to take good care of them. The kids returned to their homerooms, and the homeroom teachers talked about the care of the laptop. Now I'm going to send it back. Before, I have to interrupt myself here because I want to show you something. The kids carry these in cases. They're never allowed out of the case. But to show you how easy a slideshow is, and I showed the kids this on Friday, and so we go into a little program here. Just a second, kind of that I am. Come on, come back on, baby, here. All right, we come to iPhoto, and I showed the kids this, and I told them that I had downloaded some digital uh, photos with a digital camera that Gary loaned me. And I had them in my photo library, and I put them in a laptop folder. This, these are just random pictures that I took while people were working on the laptops to, to, to prepare them for the students on Thursday. Gary came up to me Thursday at lunch and he said, I need some help. And I went to the team and I said, Gary needs help. And immediately, as soon as they had any moments at all, they ran right down to the basement of the 1930s building and began to help him. And I mean, this was elbow work. This was really people taking computers out of their cases, people putting labels into the, the registration labels into the sleeve here and in little luggage tags, people wiring cupboards. Well, with iPhoto, all I have to do is I have to go to this little button that says share, and then I go to this little button that says slideshow, and I hit OK, one, two, and the slideshow starts. Would you pass it around? So while I'm talking, you can see some slides of teachers actually working to bring this day to the students. Even three of the eighth grade teachers, when they heard we had a call for help, they were down there during their prep period helping us too. I don't mean just help. I mean they were on their knees like everybody else helping to put these things together. Uh, the library staff came down. I remember being so tickled to see Kathy Clough there. She stayed an hour after her time that she normally leaves because she was so excited about the project and helping. Mm. I gave her a big hug. I said, this is just fantastic to have you here. We needed hands-on help. So this slideshow shows you how Gary has put the computers on the tables and he was cloning them. And then when the call of help came, everybody went down to put these computers together. But it didn't stop there. It stopped maybe for about 10 hours so all of us could get our sleep. And the kids all knew that laptop day was Friday. They couldn't wait. Of course, we kind of helped to build the anticipation as well. And as soon as the DRP testing was over and the kids had a break, we started taking those kids down to get those computers. And they came back. And the te homeroom teachers talked a little bit. And then in the afternoon, they had sessions that they had to attend. I remember being so tired the first session already and I thought oh people were asking me questions but as session two and three and four came and the kids came in and they'd been to these other sessions mm -hmm. my excitement was growing my enthusiasm my energy level was increasing theirs was and 
I, I would ask them, what have you learned? And they'd say, I learned how to care for my eye book. I learned how to travel with my eye book. I learned how to do a spreadsheet and how to keep my grades on a spreadsheet for every class. I learned that somebody has already put colored folders into my documents folder and labeled them for each class so that they know that the red folder, because it's so important, is the math folder. And they know that the dark blue folder is for social studies because of the oceans, and the green folder is for science. They know where these things go that they have to store and have to be organized. They said to me, oh, I learned about OS 10. Jason and Brian Fichero talked to them about how to adapt to this new operating system. Gary talked to them in his session about troubleshooting. What do you do when it freezes up? What do you do when it goes wrong? Do you automatically go and try to find a technician to help you, or can you solve some of these problems on your own? And they begin to learn some of these tr troubleshooting type, uh, pro trouble problem solving steps that they can take. Um, Holly and, and Brian, uh, Holly and Matt talked about um, the procedures and guidelines that we were going to go through with them. Uh, what was allowed, what was not allowed. Um, the world language teachers, they presented the fact that you can change the language on here to a foreign language if you want to have it all in French. It's just a matter of going into the system preferences and changing them. That was Friday. At 4 o'clock, when I finally peeled myself out of the classroom, did not want to leave, I looked out, I was putting the window down, and I saw some kids, seventh graders, outside my window, and I said, what did you think about laptop day? And they looked at me, we loved it! <laughs> and the only thing that they were upset about was that they couldn't take them home. And the reason why they're not taking them home yet is because we're learning about them. We're learning about how the kids learn about laptops, and we want to see what they do and how responsible they are. Plus, we're going to have three different parent orientation nights because we're following the model of Lyman Moore School that was an exploratory school, uh, exploration school over in Portland. And we all went over to visit and learn from them. And they said these parent orientation nights were the key to their success. So we will have three of those. One is going to be offered in the morning, and there are going to be two offered on, I think, the first and second, the second, third of October. And they'll run about an hour, an hour and a half long, and we hope to have the, the children of those parents there to teach them what they have learned about the laptop and caring for them. We'll answer the questions that the parents have at that time. I want you to know that your teachers have been trained. Uh, most of them went to a two-day summer training, and they are going to be going to, the ones that didn't go to that will be going this fall to their, their summer training in the fall. To summarize, I said to the team today, I sent out an email, and I said, okay, what do you want me to say to the school board? So what, what comments would you have? One teacher wrote, yesterday I introduced students to spreadsheets. This was in Brian Fichero's class. He said, we calculated grades using weighted averages. The nice part was not only that the students were using Excel, but they were also using arithmetic skills to create the very formulas. Hmm. Uh, Matt Whaley said to me, the ability to find information in the field of science in a matter of seconds is truly powerful. The students are excited about finding the information so quickly. That's what he wrote to me. When I saw him in the hall, I said, now tell me in your own words what you think. He said, well, you know, we were looking up having this activity looking up the mysterious substance, trying to find out what was this substance. And it was a science activity that they do in the science classes. He said, you know, as soon as they studied the substance, they went right online and they investigated it and they found different links to learn about that substance. He said, I didn't have that potential as a teacher last year to have the kids have that immediate access. I asked Conrad Berkey, so how'd it go the first two days of this week? He said, you know, I didn't have a map of Spain. And he said, I wanted these kids to see a map of Spain. Well, let's turn on your laptops. He said, not only did I have a map of Spain that was up to date, but I had the music, the Spanish music of Spain. I had the anthem. I had the flag. I had the customs. He said, everything was right there. Um, I could go on and on and on. I, I asked Joanne Paquette, and she said, oh my goodness. She said, be sure to tell them that these computers do not replace teachers, that we're there, we're doing the same things that we were doing before. But you know, she said, we might use them five minutes here, and then they close them, and then maybe we'll use them 20 minutes down the way, and we're doing something else on them. We might use them the whole period, we might use them not at all. 
but we're using them, and the kids love them. I, one teacher said to me, be sure to say how motivated the students who normally aren't motivated are. Then as long as they have those laptops, we have their attention. It's like this. They want to know what to do next. You ask them to close and focus and, and take the laptop and put it away, your, their attention span goes down. They don't seem to be as interested. So yes, it's new. Whether or not we can keep the momentum up is yet to be decided, but I think we will. And I'm very excited, and I'm so glad that I'm here this year watching it happen before my very eyes and not in a rocking chair sitting beside my mother's rocking chair <laughs> and being envious of my main colleagues. The team is wonderful. They're keeping their sense of humor. Uh, it has been hard work, but you know you have to spend time to save time. And I think that these computers will not only be uh, helping us in our efficiency, but they're going to be helping Maine in the, uh, the economic scene of the future. It's the way it is. We have arrived really running forward. So thank you very much for your time. Nancy, I don't know how well I did, but I used more time than she said. So thank you. <laughs> thank you, Deborah. Thank you, Bill. It's nice to see you so excited about this, isn't it? Contagious. Yeah. Um, and that's it for you, Nancy, right? Okay. Um, so then we'll move on to the committee reports. Um, the finance subcommittee, Elaine. I wish it was as exciting as <laughs> his <bad> last <laughs> report. <laughs> um, the Finance Committee met uh, prior to our regular school board meeting this evening. Um, they uh, reviewed the appropriation reports and uh, signed the warrants. Uh, we did spend uh, 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 the bulk of our meeting uh, talking about the financial implications of uh, the building projects that are currently being considered um, by the Building Committee and uh, subsequently the uh, school board. And uh, I'll let perhaps Marie talk a little bit more about the specifics about in her report about where the building projects are. Um, we did follow up with uh, a financial update from Pauline on some of the staff changes and the funds that became available because of that. Um, we are about the same place we were last year at this time with that account. And um, I know last year a lot of the uh, that money was used towards some long-term uh, illnesses that we had in our various school systems. So uh, we should be in good shape as far as uh, making sure that that money is used appropriately. Um, we talked about anticipated funds from some federal grants that we are hopefully getting in the latter part of this year. And uh, that would help uh, counter the uh, loss that we had from the state uh, to the tune of about 40,000 that came later this spring. Okay. Thank you. Um, the policy subcommittee, Susan. Um, the policy committee met for the first time this year on September 4th, uh, and I was the rookie in the room, so, um, so it was a learning experience for me. We um, spent the time in the meeting discussing a process for defining our role, kind of what we thought all the committees, the school board committees were going to be doing this year, defining our role and, and um, determining how we're going to operate. So we have more work to do on that, but that's begun. Um, we also received copies of um, information from the state regarding um, codes of conduct, and we, we're going to take that home and, and um, discuss that at our next meeting after we've kind of read it over, absorbed it, and made our comments. We, uh, brainstormed what policies we think we need to review this year or to um, look at and maybe even write this year. So we basically have a list of things that we want to get accomplished during the next year. We also um, spend some time talking about how we're going to communicate to other groups and committees within the school system and uh, came up with, um, first of all, what we're going to do is keep minutes and distribute those so people are more apprised of what we're doing uh, from meeting to meeting. And also we came up with a grid as a tool which will list the policies that we're working on, where we are, what the next steps are, so that people f f also will have a communication piece so we can stay in touch with them through the rest of the year and they can provide feedback. Um, what we didn't do was decide at what point that gets distributed to other groups. So. Uh, I didn't feel comfortable distributing that to the board yet. Hopefully for the next meeting you'll have a copy of what we hope to accomplish this year in case you think we've left something out. 
um, and also a copy of our minutes. And, and, and I suspect you'll be getting those monthly as we go along, just, just to stay apprised of the work that we're doing. Uh, the next meeting will be October 2nd at 12 noon. Okay. Thank you. Um, and the building committee. Actually, we, the, building, the full building committee has not had a meeting since our last school board meeting. Um, however, a smaller group of six have met. And um, our discussion was taking the uh, initial proposal that came from the architect um, and taking a look at that and um, coming up with some areas that we want to discuss in our next um, big building committee meeting, which will be on September 26th at um, 7 o'clock. And we anticipate that the, the building committee will um, meet at least two more times before we come up with a total dollar figure that we are comfortable with to, um, for the building committee to take to the school board and then to take on to the town council. So we really do have a lot of work and we've just started that, you know, going through floor by floor in the high school and, and looking at, you know, what really has to be done um, and what are our needs um, for the next um, quite a few years, actually. Um, so that's it, and, and we will meet again on September 26th, um, and hopefully we'll have more information at the next meeting. Um, we can move on to unfinished business, um, and we have a second reading of an athletic trip policy. Right. Um, the policy committee looked at this uh, at our meeting. On September 4th, it was brought before the board, I think last May, for the first reading. This is the second reading. We had, we continued to have discussion at that meeting, and I'm not sure if it's necessarily reflected here, but, but some issues came up um, around the athletic trip policy. One was that we might want some wording that encourages these trips to remain in New England as much as possible at some point. Um, another was that we might want some wording around making sure that we're not leaving any students out. And that gets complicated because um, at some point we're not sure what varsity teams have been selected when they begin to plan their trips. Um, so with that in mind... I think it, and the suggestion was, since it did come for a first reading last spring, there had quite, there's been quite a bit of time that's passed, and usually it's one month to the next month, so that might not be wise to, to, to vote on this tonight, but to, to digest it um, and then have it go back to the policy committee um, because some suggestions have come up in the meantime. Um, and I think this is significant in that um, there are a lot of booster groups who are involved with um, athletic trips and they really need to be aware of the importance of coming to the school board uh, prior to getting heavily involved in fundraising and those kinds of activities. Um, and so this, although it's not, it's not a long and involved policy, I think it has uh, significant implications for many of the, the booster organizations. So I want to make sure we get the wording just right so it's clear, and I don't think we're at that point right now. Okay, so everyone, it's in everyone's packet, so we should read it, and if we have any questions, get them to Susan. Okay. Excuse me. Yes, Kevin. A couple of comments on the policy. Number one is I think it needs to include something about fundraising as to when fundraising for a specifically planned trip can begin, mm -hmm. as it's come to my attention that there is fundraising currently going on for a trip that hasn't even been presented to us yet, mm. which violates the spirit and intent of existing policy. Uh, number two is I don't like fait accomplis, um, and I think that in order to prevent that, we need to attach to this policy an administrative guideline that shows an example of a timeline for submitting a request. Um, I think this by the school board one month prior to the final decision of the board is pretty gray and can put us in a position where we will be making a decision whether or not a trip is go or no go a week or so before it's scheduled to happen. 
which means that everything has been done without mm -hmm. our approval again. And I will not vote for any trip that's planned at, to that extent um, that, has, that doesn't have our approval. Uh, so those are my concerns with this policy. So noted. Thank you. Any other comments? No. Okay. Um, then we'll move on to new business. The first item is um, consideration of the superintendent's recommendations for athletic fee positions. Um, you have in, in front of you um, four um, fall coaching nominations um, at the middle school. Uh, one is Heidi LaRose for middle school field hockey, Joe Hendrickson, seventh grade girls soccer, Gary Newell, boys soccer, and Excuse me if I slaughter this name, Adrian Cedronic. Close enough. Eighth grade boys soccer, which the in, in the middle school this year, we're experimenting with some different structures, um, and we'll be coming to the school board with a plan um, on how we want to um, do a better job with structuring our hiring and um, our supervision of coaches. So the middle school took on the responsibility this fall of uh, advertising for and interviewing uh, these coaches. And we're also trying to get to you a, a better process for giving you more information about a coach who has not worked for us before. Um, so this is, this is our first attempt at doing that, and we'll refine it as we go along and hopefully have um, a structure in place to bring to you for, for approval um, once we work out some of the kinks. But those are the four individuals for the coaching positions. Okay. Do we have a motion? Kevin? I move that we accept the superintendent's recommendations for athletic fee positions for fall, and I would like to add as a personal comment that I appreciate the response to additional information on coaching candidates. It certainly fits my bill. Thank you. Okay. Um, a second? Susan? Um, any other questions or comments? No? Okay, all in favor? Six, zero. Um, next, consideration of the superintendent's recommendation for co-curricular fee positions. We have a number of co-curricular fee positions, um, some being system-wide, some at the high school, middle school, um, and a number of uh, co-curricular positions at the middle school for the 2002-2003 school year that I would like to recommend for your approval. Okay. Do we have a motion? George? I'd move that we accept the superintendent's recommendation to fill the co-curricular fee positions um, for the school year 2002-2003 as presented. Okay. And a second? Kathy? Sure. I second the motion. Okay. Thank you. Um, any questions or comments? Okay. All in favor? Six, zero. Okay. Um, next item, approval to receive and spend all federal and state grants for um, this school year, 2002-2003. And what we need in this case is a, is a motion to give us that ability as those grants to come in um, to spend that money. Okay. And that is as the grant that we reviewed tonight in the Finance Committee meeting. Um, do we have a motion? Kevin? I move that we authorize the superintendent to accept all grant funds and spend them according to the terms and conditions of the grant. Okay, thank you. Um, second? Susan? Uh, questions or comments? None? Um, all in favor? Six, zero. Okay. Next on our list, um, consideration of requests from the Foreign Language Department um, regarding trips for this school year. And it has, as has been the, the case in the past, and the Foreign Language Department has been very good about getting this information to the school board early on, and I apologize for um, not thinking to move you up in the agenda. I know you've been very patient sitting there. Um, but Mark and David are here, as they were last year, um, to give you some initial information about their trip. Um, at this meeting looking for approval to begin to move ahead with the planning of that trip and to ask you for what other information you might 
need. Good evening, and thank you for letting us come before you tonight. Um, as you see from the proposals before you, we are again looking to have exchange trips this year. We're hoping to take one both to France and to Costa Rica. Um, last year's trip to France um, was canceled on both sides of the Atlantic because of the events of last year. Uh, this year we're hopeful that we are able uh, to put it together. Um, likewise in Costa Rica, they did not feel comfortable coming to the U.S. at the time. They had to make that commitment. Things were not very stable, but this year they are interested in making it a true exchange that will be going both ways. Um, and so I guess I'm here to answer any questions you might have. Do we have any questions? None? A comment. Yes. I do appreciate the way the language department comes to us early on with these requests and uh, gives us the opportunity to think about them, not that there's all that tremendously, uh, a lot of thinking that goes into it. Oh, well. I certainly support it and appreciate your cooperation with us. Oh, thank you. And again, this is something we need to for our own planning, just because there's so much lead time required to get this going, that um, the earlier is the better for us. And there's a lot of information that you've given us, so we appreciate that. Okay. So that's it. Okay. Thank, Thank you. you. That was easy. Oh, I'm sorry that we made them wait all this while. I'm sorry. I had a stack of papers. I'm all set. <laughs> just think all you know about laptops. Google has begun. <laughs> you need to hear from me. Uh, actually, the Costa Rican trip is going well, except for they had a change in a principle. So I need to hear back from them whether or not she's going to okay it. Um, the head mother nun, or whatever her name is, um, they have another one, and so she she needs to approve this at the school. Um, as it stands right now, though, um, what we thought wasn't going to be an exchange has actually become an exchange, and seven of the Costa Rican kids. Um, that hosted families last year are going to be coming here in January. So we get the benefit of having them here and having them be a part of the school district, which I'm real happy about. And as it stands now, I'm looking at April 14th through the 30th. That's April vacation falls in there. So the kids really end up with um, seven days out of school. So it would be a total of a full week, mm -hmm. which um, I think is feasible for them with the workload. And, and the prices are about the same, too. And the, the groups down in Costa Rica that we worked with are, are wonderful. So it's nice to have that base, and uh, we look forward to planning this and, and continuing with it. So I guess Alice, the same question as David. Do you have any questions? Uh, the only question is, Mark, why maybe changing the organization who's putting it together for you? Here you say it, it might be either or. Um, because CI, uh, Culture, Council of C-I-E-E. -E. I know they're an acronym. I forget the whole thing. Council exchanges. I just received a letter three days ago informing us that they are not going to continue with a student abroad program. Okay. Um, they're going to do it next year. So we have them as the umbrella organization next year, and they carry the same package that they carried. After that, they're not. But the organization in Costa Rica that I work with is very efficient. They also run a university exchange program out of Akron, Ohio. With, a, with another university, and their contact has actually been much better with me than going through the Boston office. Um, and so that's why um, I considered going with them, too. Okay. Plus, they have better rates from Costa Rica if they buy the tickets, so. Great. Thank you. Okay. Any other questions? Okay. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Okay, and next on our list, a request from Nancy um, Murphy, high school English teacher, regarding a trip to Italy and Greece. Nancy could not be here uh, tonight because of a doctor's appointment that was late in the afternoon. Um, so she asked me to stand in and answer any questions. I know she's presented um, similar proposals in the past. This is essentially over spring break. Um, it's a different location this time. It's, it's Greece and Italy, which I think the kids will be excited about. Um, mm -hmm. And I think she's presented to the board, hopefully, the information that you need. Last year was just Italy, wasn't it? Uh, yes. Yeah. Does this involve any uh, loss of school days? It, it, it will probably involve at least one day, the Friday before the April break, depending on the 
between reservations that could work out in the cost, it possibly might involve two days, but it's it's minimal. Okay, thank you. And so, thanks to Nancy and Mark and David for getting us all the information um, that is necessary for us to look at so far in advance. We appreciate it. Kevin? I don't know if this fits in well at this point, but um, over the summer I was uh, visiting with friends from uh, a very strong school district in Virginia, and uh, when we got together for the first time personally, they congratulated me on the fact that Cape Elizabeth would be going to Edinburgh, Scotland at some point. And uh, I was a little surprised that I had to find out about this planned trip um, from people from Virginia. And uh, I understand that this is happening over summer vacation but I still feel the need for us to be involved with this, at least to know about it as a matter of courtesy. It was presented in the spring. Excuse me? Uh, Dick Mullen presented in the spring. Where was I? I don't know. In spring or in June? Could have been June. Well, well if it was June, I wasn't here. Maybe it was a meeting you missed. It probably was June, because that would have been after the show. Yeah, it was June, at the June meeting. OK. Thank you. George, did you have a yeah, I just wanted to um, be clear about what we all just did. Um, we es essentially, um, there was consensus of the board for them to move ahead with their planning, but we did not approve the trips. Not until next month. Okay, just so that we're all clear on the record. That's the way that we do it, and okay. Okay. So we've not changed that process. Okay. Okay, and then I'd just like to go over the meetings for the, the next month. The policy subcommittee will meet on Wednesday, October, 7, October 2nd um, at 12 noon in the William Jordan Conference Room. The finance subcommittee, uh, October 8th, 6.30 in the William Jordan Conference Room. The school board workshop on Tuesday, September 24th in the high school library will be at 7.30, not 7 p.m. Um, and the topic there will be um, kindergarten. The building committee meeting will be Thursday, September 26th at 7 p.m. in the William Jordan Conference Room. And that is it. And I think we could have a motion to end the public session and then we take another motion to, to end just to go into executive session. Okay, okay. And to go into executive session. Okay, um, George? I would um, move that we uh, adjourn the public session of our meeting to enter into executive session, not to return to public session afterwards. Okay. And a second. Susan? All in favor? Six, zero. Okay, thank you. Good night.